everyone, my name is Rick Pasek, the Fly Fish Fanatic. Welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today, we're gonna, it's going to be a longer video, probably 25, maybe even 30 minutes, and we'll see. Um, I'm going to be tying a uh, nice uh, intruder style pattern, a great steelhead pattern, uh, really good for uh, bull trout, big cutties, big rainbows, um, all kinds of uh, fish really like this fly. Uh, the color pattern, just black and red, done, black and red, nothing else. So. Alrighty, here we go. I'm not going to play around because it's going to take a while. So we're going to start off with a, uh, a partridge, uh, which is this one, uh, Double Waddington. Oh, it's a, I've had these for a while. Army and Navy, they're not around anymore. So it's a, uh, yeah, Waddington chain. Going to use uh, Semperfly Nano Soak for the thread. Um, unfortunately, I ran out. I normally have a 20 or 30 pound fire line that I use for the trailing hook. I only got 10 pounds, so it does sit down a bit. It's not quite as... Uh, Obviously not quite as uh, uh, strong. So um, that being said, it will work for what I want it to do. I just got to find the start of it because I think it got buried there. There we go. Um, so this will be for the trailing hook. Um, and I'll make sure because this, this fire line is a little bit. But you can see, I mean, it is stiff, but it does, once a, a hook hangs on there, you can see here that the, the hook hangs down. And that's, that's not ideal, but it will work. And that trailing hook on that other one that I just showed you guys is a little on the long side. So I'm just going to explain my materials as I go. Otherwise, it's just going to take too long. So right away, make sure you wax your thread really well. Okay. You can put a little bit of uh, cement if you want or, or crazy glue right onto the shank. lock that all in it's all going to get hidden anyway but the better you can lock this stuff in the better and that's what this is one of the reasons i like the nano silk it really closes that up because you can just crank on it right wax okay so really wax this up i'm going to actually pull it out and wax my thread well in again if you would like if you can put in a couple of dabs of uh of uh, crazy glue here but that's up to you this isn't for everybody this is a bit more of an obviously an advanced fly this isn't for the beginner I would definitely not recommend this for the beginner um, unless you want to get frustrated so I'm gonna go through the eye and then I'm gonna hang back I want it to hang back up enough that I can put my trailing hook on and it's going to be an ultra point. Uh, I think this is a size four. Yeah, must add ultra point. Um, so I want to be able to have enough so I can put that on. So about there, I'm just going to bring that like that. Come all the way back again. You don't have to worry too too much about building up any bulk here. Um, it's kind of all going to be hidden. You don't want to build too much up, right? And then I'm going to come under. And lock that in underneath and then I'm going to come back over top and just an open wraps lock it in again and one more time this I just know that this is uber super secure I would have, I would have only done twice if I would have had the uh, 30 pound but so now again I'm just gonna go through it just make sure with my nano silk here that that's tied right down nice and tight Make sure that that fish is not going to be able to pull that out in any way, shape, or form. So there, it's done. Okay. Now I'm not going to, um, I am not going to put that trailer hook on until the very end. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to have that in my way. I mean, I could put it on. I don't want to. This guy always finds it gets in the way. So now I'm going to come right back to the back here, and I'm going to get um, some. Hens Gleamy dubbing the red right there that red number six And it's the it's the gleamy. It's got some when you hit this thing with a I don't know if it'll show up, but when you hit that with a UV light this stuff just pops 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 Okay, so I'm gonna get a bit of that out and I'm gonna just Align these fibers a bit 
because they're they're not the longest fibers these ones so I'm just gonna align them so they're aligned stack them and then I'm pulling them apart just try to get them aligned and I'm loosening off they're a little bit tight in that packaging right so I want them nice and nice and loose and fluffy take gonna make a dubbing loop here get that out of the way get my spinner I said I'll try to go quick-ish, but I also don't want to make a mess of it. So this is not a short fly. So I've uh, waxed my thread, got my dubbing spinner in, put my loop, my dubbing into the dubbing loop, spread that out nicely so it's even. Okay, Give that a good uh, spinner roomy. Really giving a good spin there. You know, thumb and forefinger, push it up. See another spin. Thumb and forefinger, push it up. That'll just make sure that that spin that's in there will go forward. Then I'm going to take my Velcro and just pull it out a bit. I just want to make sure that stuff is spiked out. And I'm right there at the back. I'm going to create a, a bit of a ball. Okay. If it's longer materials that you've got, stroke it back, okay? Just want to create a bit of a dubbing bowl right there. Okay, come back again. Lock that thread in, that uh, dubbing loop. Cut that off. I like just coming a little bit forward. Just making sure that's all nice and loose there. Okay, don't throw that little bit away that you just scrap, scraped off because you'll need it for the front section. Okay, now I'm going to come back again, and this time I'm going to get a piece of black um, fox. Just going to get a little piece right off the leather here, right? Just off the, off the, right off the leather. I don't want it, the leather, obviously, um, or the skin, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to grab a bunch like that. Right at the leather there. There's my. I use these. These are phenomenal scissors. They're by Renome. They're um, uh, they're uh, uh, braid cutting scissors. They just cut this stuff like nothing. So now what I like doing is I'm like taking this and I'll pinch it really hard, right here. Pinch it really hard. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dubbing brush, this the hard toothbrush, and I'm just going to brush this out. Okay, now I'm going to brush it out on the table. You're not going to see it, but I'll show you the result in a minute. So what it's done is taken all that fluff out, all that under fur here. All that under fluff has come out, which I don't want in there. It just adds bulk, right? So, so now I'm just going to put that down on the table for a second. I'm going to build another dubbing loop here. Come forward. Wax, wax, wax. Big key to this fly is making sure you wax. So, I'm gonna take my fox tail. So this is um, black fox tail. I'm just gonna stick it in there for now. I'm gonna put my dubbing spinner on. Get my fingers out of there. Dubbing spinner on. And I'm going to spread this out, okay, just a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in here with my scissors. Usually I just hold that. I'm just going to shorten that a bit. I don't want that much butt sticking out. Just give it a quick little short snip. Okay. Spin, spin, spin. All that, get it, make sure all that spin is into it. Same procedure. This time I'm just gonna take the brush portion, brush that out. Okay. Sometimes I wet my fingers here and I just want to try to train all this to one direction. And then I'll just right at that bowl and then just move in front of that, 
right in front. Don't worry about what it looks like right away. Okay, so now I know that's good. Come back to the back with my thread. Lock that dubbing loop in. Lock it in, lock it in. Lay it back go over top of it. Come back forward again. Cut off your old loop. Then I'll take my brush. And just brush that out. I want this all brushed out. Sometimes I'll even take the uh, Velcro brush and just have that all back. So, okay, just remember this is your upside, right? Just because it does, you don't want, you, we're, we're going to keep the bottom side of this fairly empty. It just helps with the silhouette in the water. So, all right, garbage. So, next step here is I'm going to take some of my uh, uh, red flashaboo. Okay, so this is just uh, number 9669. It's one of my favorite colors actually from flashaboo. And I'm just going to take three or four, not too, too many, don't go crazy. You want flash in this, but don't go nuts. So there's, I think, four, maybe five, I'm not sure there. Cut that right off the card. Okay. I'm going to line up my tips as well as I can. Don't worry that they're going to go kind of all over the place there. It's just the way they, they are. And when you get them wet, they'll stick. So I want this to be about to where the, where the uh, uh, hook um, is going to be. So a little bit past that, so about there. And I'm going to tie it on my side. Okay. So one... Two, make sure it's all caught in. There we go. Three. So that's all caught in. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it in on your side, about like that. Leave this loop in the front. So now that's in on your side. And what I like to do here is I'll take this and I'll cut this. And then I'll lay it back. Yes, they're a little shorter, but that's okay for this fly. It's not bad. So, okay. So, don't worry about what it looks like. It's a little ratty. Once it's once this thing is in the water, this thing will just pulsate and get into a into a nice little package. So, now I'm taking some uh, Intruder Spay Hackle UV Black. Basically, all this is is a dyed black peacock um, hurl. So, I'm going to take three or four. Let me get that flashy boo out of my way. I'm going to take three or four. I'm going to try to line up these tips as well as I can. This, this, uh, this package is getting near the end here. So there's three. Okay, and I'm going to lay it on this side. Again, as long as that flashaboo to the hook. Okay. Two, three, four. Once in front. Cut that off. I actually save these for doing bodies and stuff on smaller flies. Okay, so that's on one side. Like I remember, this is the top, if you want to call it that. I'm gonna get three or four more. Just pull them out of my package there. Line these tips up as well as I can. Like I said, this package is getting near the end of its good quality and I haven't found any, any more of this black dyed black peacock in the wild, so I'll have to find some more. Um, roughly the same thing again, about the same distance. Okay, three or four of them, lay it there. Once in front. Save that. And one last time on the top now. This time I'm going to get four or five. Just get a couple extras. And it doesn't really, it's actually good if they're not perfectly the same length. Having them slightly different, staggered, is not bad. So now I'm going to, again, lay that in roughly the dist length I want. And then I'm actually going to just put my nail in there and I'm going to cut my forefinger and just going to spread that out a little bit. You see how I spread that? So, okay. 
come forward a bit, come back a bit. On top, cut that off, and that is my back portion, back section complete. Okay, just gonna come back up and down just to make sure everything's good. Now I'm gonna take some of this Semperfly Flat Braid Hollow Gray. It's kind of a silvery black. I think I got enough in this piece here. I might not, I mean, better get a longer one just so I don't run out. Okay, and then I'm gonna lay this, come forward a little bit, just lay that in there. Come back. Now I do, actually I'm gonna leave this back here because I do need some, I need to put the eye in now. And the reason I put the eye in now, it gives me a, a location for where to stop my body. And where did I put my dumbbell eyes? I'll probably put them back. Scoosh de noise. Uh, where are they? My little red ones or my little yellow ones, either or. The red ones would be better. I like the red in this uh, just because it definitely will, you'll see at the end it kind of sticks through and you'll you definitely you'll see that red eyeball sticking through so it's just a little red hourglass eye gonna leave a little bit of room in the front there a couple times one way a couple times another Okay, here I like putting a dab of head cement, um, um, crazy glue. In this case, it's uh, M300M by Mercury Adhesives. It's a, it's crazy glue. Just put one little dab there, and then work that in. It just helps figure eight it in. It just helps hold these eyes. You don't want these eyes to move on you. Otherwise, it gets just a, becomes a mess with. Uh, when you're fishing, so this one can actually just add a little twist. Yeah, there we go. Just make sure that's where you want it. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my flat braid and just in slightly overlapping wraps. This is why I said I ended up getting a, a longer piece because I don't think that other one would have made it. Because you do want them overlapping. You don't want to see any of the underbody sticking out. You want that really nice shiny body. And about, oh, of course I let it go. I say about there I can stop, but <laughs> I will redo that, not a big deal. Kind of what happens when you're trying to hurry. I know it's gonna be a long video, but I don't want it to be like 45, 50 minutes long, but it'll be what it is. That uh, had a little bump there I didn't like. That's why I went back. Okay, one more, maybe one more, because I can always tie over top of it, which I will end up doing. So, a couple on top. Couple behind, couple in front. Just get that body tied in really nice. Cut off my tail, my, uh, my waist piece. And now I'm going to repeat the back, uh, the, the, what I did in the back. So start off right away with that red dubbing. Try to speed this up a little bit because you guys have kind of already seen this. Uh, there's one extra step at the front here. Um, but uh, You'll see that in a second, so a little bit of red dub. Dubbing loop. Come on. Try to get my spinner in there. My fingers get in the way. Take my dubbing, put it in, spread it out. Good spin, another good spin, push that up, spin, push that up, 
get my Velcro running a better pull out. And right there, I'm going to build a little bit of a, a dubbing ball. Right? And come in front of it. Dubbing ball built. Velcro this all out forward and then lay it back. Like I said, this stuff just glows when you hit it with UV. So, second, another, where did I go? Another batch of my black fox. I don't want quite as much this time as I did in the back but I'd like to have longer ones if possible. Sometimes that can be difficult, depending on your box tail. Loop. Waxy wax. Spinner. Spinner, spinner. Really like swinging this fly. Love having this thing in the current and letting it swing. It has lots of movement, this fly. So swinging these are, is awesome. So pinching my thread, giving it a really good spin, letting it go. Like I said, it's a little thinner, but longer. Okay. I lick my fingers just stroke all this stuff back just so it stays out of my way and then same here make sure that this stuff is all as best as possible laying back there you go there you go tie that off just run right through that stuff Don't worry if it's all spiked up for now I'll lay that down in a second here. Lick my fingers. I'm going to take this whole thing, just everything upper, up and, and below, and just go on top of it now a bit, just to make sure that stuff lays back in there. That's how I want. See how that's a little thinner? It's not quite, it's a bit more wispy. That's what I want. Okay. Next, red flash. This time, I'm going to have three or four again laying it on my side all the way back again I want it all the way back so right to there just gonna hold it there put it, tie this in right behind the eyes a couple of a couple of turns and then I'll lay this over give it a turn and another turn all the way back and you may have to trim this because it might be a little long that's fine let it trim so now you got your red on the sides. You gotta grab two or three more strands here. Usually two is enough. If you grab three, not a big deal. Double it over. And then tie that in. Okay. Again, I want it as about as long as where the first set, all the way back there. Okay, tie that in, cut off that excess, tie this all down, get that red out of the way, a little bit of wax. Okay, same procedure, black. Ostrich works just as well here. Um, so again, Two or three down this side. Cut that off. Two or three down the other side. And again, line up your tips as best as you can. Does not have to be perfect. About there. That off. A couple 
more and we're almost done guys we got a couple more steps to do and that's it so now I got about four for the top again I'm gonna lay it in there take one maybe two wraps and then we take my thumb and four finger here and I'm just gonna kind of spread those out just a little bit so it's covering that whole top cut that off a bit more wax on my thread here hold all that back okay and then what I like doing is I'll start right there and I'm gonna grab a black schloppen feather try to find one that's got fairly decent length get rid of all this crap on the bottom that you don't want all the marabouish type stuff if you like tying like aftershaft leeches and stuff that's that marabou this this stuff that I just pulled off is here is great for it so but okay so now I'm just gonna that's way too long just stripping back what I don't I know I won't need here and I'm gonna tie this in by the tip so I'm gonna again figure out the length I want about there yeah about there stroke all that back and tie this in by the tip right there right behind that those eyes okay three or four I'm actually going to fold this back and go back over top of it. It'll just help hold those in. Okay, and you're going to make sure that shiny side is out, right? Facing you. Facing forward is what it actually is, right? So just give me a quick clean up here so stuff doesn't get caught. There. So now I'm going to take this material and I'm going to bring my tying thread forward here. Stroke this all back once right there twice right there and then I'm gonna come forward in front of that eye and again in front of that eye and tie that off okay the reason I want in front of that eye is I want to kind of partially hide that eye but I want that eye to stick through so now I'm just gonna take my brush again get all that box off of it and just sweep back those schloppen feathers I'm gonna lick my hand a bit my fingers and I'm gonna come right up against those that eye and tie the schloppen feathers back okay so now you can take a look at it and go okay that wasn't quite enough or that was enough um, I don't like that. I don't think it's enough for my taste. So I'm going to add one more schloppen feather. That one's too big. That one's too small. Start out no, there. That one should do. That'll do. I'm starting to get to the end of this pack too. And when you're tying these big flies, this material goes pretty quick. So okay. And again, I'm just going to want about there. I don't want a ton of more on the front. So I'm going to tie that in again by the tip. Hold that back, tie that down. Nip off your tip. If you're confident you can pull that off, I'm not. So now I'm going to make sure that all that shiny side is facing forward. Again, I'm going to go right up against those eyes if I can right up against those eyes and one more maybe two one I'll give it one more I like I like having a a lot of movement from the schloppen in the front here so yeah, I'll use that whole feather up I'm gonna talk, put a build a bit of a head here anyway so but just kind of see that it already it kind of hides that those red eyes but the red eyes stick through that's what I really want from this fly take my where the heck did it go there it is stem cut that off take my brush again and brush that out that's slopping now I'm gonna just stroke this all back and I'm gonna build myself come back towards sorry I got some 
dubbing over that thread, come back towards the eye. I want the, the schloppen off of the eye, so the red is showing through there. And I'm just going to come back a bit and build a bit of a head. It does take a little bit because it is nano silk, so it does take a while. I'll just flatten my thread out because it's not that thick, so it does take a little bit to build a head. Okay, now we'll do a one whip finish, set of four or five. Second set of whip finish. Another five. Really give that a tug, get that seated. Cut that off. Now I'm gonna take just a little tiny bit of the Gulf Thin Mint. Try not to get it on your schloppen, or not much at least. If you do, just, to, I mean, try not to. Tiny little, tiny little bit. Spread that just so it completely covers all of that thread on the head there. It doesn't need a lot. You just want to make sure it's covered. Okay, zappy zappy. See that, that that red gleamy pushing through there, the odd little feather, odd little uh, um, highlight there from that dubbing. It's awesome. I really love that, that gleamy stuff. It's really cool. So now obviously this eye is going to be riding that way in the water. That's why you want all this up top. You want it more open on the bottom. It just helps it breathe. Then I'm going to take my hook my ultra point, you can take whatever kind of hook you like, whatever size hook you like, depending on the, the fish you're going after. And I'm just going to move that out of the way. Find my piece of fire line there. I'm going to go from the top in. And then hook myself with it. And then uh, open that up. Come on, open up. There you go. And... That's it. And you see how that, this one, this hook is right at the tail of all this material. Not like this one. This one's sticking past the material when it lays down. It's just sticking past. It's a little, this one here is a little long. Um, this one here is perfect. I like it hidden in there, right? So, but that's it. That, that's your, that's your finished fly. Um, this thing is, like I said, it is, I, I would use, definitely use a 20 or 30 pound preferably 25 to 30 pound um, fire line or whatever for your trailing hook. Uh, you can see how this is a little limp and it hangs down. But once this all gets wet, this will sleek back into almost like a like a like a leech pattern, but it'll breathe really well in that uh, in the in the current, right? And like I said, it's being open in the bottom like that, it'll help it'll help uh, hold it up a bit too. So um, and yeah, lot, lots of uh, movement in this fly, lots of real cool color. That black is uh, is very, uh, you know, uh, uh, a popular steelhead color. The black and then that red, that red just pops. Black and red is such a, it's a match made in heaven when it comes to, uh, when it comes to um, fly fishing, right? So that is it. Like I said, it looks a little unruly right now, but once that's in the water, this stuff moves like you wouldn't believe, so. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Like I said, I know it was a little bit longer and it was not my typical, you know, uh, either trout style flies or or I, when I do a steelhead, I, quite often I'll do uh, spade type flies, but I've been tying intruders on and off for oh, a dozen plus years and I, j I love tying them. They're a fun project to tie. They're fun to, fun to experiment with and they work, they work, they work. Um, fast water, slow water, you can adjust whether you want uh, a bigger dumbbell eyes in smaller dumbbell eyes no dumbbell eyes if you were if you're going in shallower water and you don't want to get down um that deep uh don't put any dumbbell eyes in right so it's it's all just uh knowing where you're gonna fish and where the fish are so alrighty. hope you guys enjoyed that one um i like i said i love tying these things and uh i hope you guys uh um take the time and have some fun and and, and yeah and experiment with color patterns too right like I, i'll tie this and greens and oranges and reds and blacks all kinds of different colors so all right actually one of my favorites uh i can't remember ugh, i can't remember his name now but it's a gentleman that uh ran a fly shop in, Coqu in port coquitlam um he's got a um 
uh, fly that he came up with, an intruder fly. It's called um, the Happy Endings or the Whorehouse. Phenomenal fly. Um, such a good fly. It was uh, black and blue, and, and uh, it just was a, an absolute deadly steelhead fly. Probably the best intruder steelhead fly I've ever had, I've ever used. So, but uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed that one. See you in the next time video. Ciao, lines. Mm -hmm.